Samantha sure has come a long way since I brought her back home. With all the work done in the past videos, there's still more to go. I think we're finally starting to get down to the nitty gritty. And before you know it, she'll be ready for a paint job. And I can't wait to see her with a fresh coat of paint. On this episode, I will be fixing the switch to turn on my brights. As you can see, currently the switch is just kind of flopping around. If you like this video, show your support and subscribe. Let's get started. First, we'll start by removing the steering wheel. I rented the steering wheel puller kit from Advanced Auto. It was only about 30 bucks and you get the money back when you return it. Once the steering wheel is off, here's what you'll see. Now. If I had the proper tools, I would be using a pick. I didn't have a pick laying around, so I had to work with a very small screwdriver and a pair of needle nose pliers. I got it to work, but it wasn't the easiest thing in the world. Now once that's removed, there's yet again another U-ring. Back to the trusty old screwdriver and needle nose pliers. In hindsight, I should have used a steering wheel plate compressor. The funny thing is I actually have one and I forgot about it. This is what it looks like. So if you have one of these, use it. It'll make things a little bit easier. There's a few screws to remove now. That one in particular holds the mechanism that clicks the blinker back and forth. Don't forget to remove your hazard light button. Alright, I just found myself looking around on Google to figure this out, and as it turns out, see that that white switch right here, it moves when I move this? There is supposed to be a plastic piece that goes from this white piece and attaches to the rod that's going through my steering column, and that is called the, uh, the high beam actuator, which means somebody has likely been in here before and um, either forgot to put it back in. I don't see how it could have fallen out, but it is, it's completely gone. Fortunately, I was able to track one down on eBay, so I'm gonna order it. These components can get kind of tricky. So here's a diagram that really helped me out, and I'll leave a link to this in the description. In this diagram, the actuator is part number 21. This has arrived. This is the plastic actuator. And I honestly don't exactly know how this goes. I'm still trying to figure it out. What it seems like is this should go in from behind and sort of fit in there like that. And I think this plastic piece here is gonna be holding it on in. So I'm gonna have to finagle this and figure out exactly how it goes. It's probably gonna go kind of in there like that so it can move back and forth. But this is gonna get this is gonna be tough to catch on camera, so I'm just gonna do it and magically reappear when it's done. 
Oh look, I did it. It wasn't easy. In fact, it uh, kind of sucked. And, but everything's put back together now. And um, now when I do this, still nothing really happens, but it is pushing the actuator. I can feel it pushing the rod. So now I gotta get under here and adjust the switch under the dashboard. I think I gotta loosen it up, pull it forward a little bit, and then hopefully I have my brights back. That's the switch I'm talking about, right there. It's very difficult to get to it, but there's a nut on the top side over here that I'm trying to get loose. I'm still in the process of trying to find the other nut that'll loosen this. The idea is this probably has to slide forward ever so slightly because here's the other end of that metal rod right here and currently what's happening is here's the switch and when I when it moves you can see it's not pushing it far enough but if I push it with my finger it does click so it works I just have to move it all right, if you're doing this at home, look, these bolts are not easy to get to. There's one right here. That's the easy one. And then the second one, I mean, it's gonna be impossible for me to even capture it on the camera because I can barely see it even with my own eyes. But I do have my tool, my extension. You see it's sticking out there. I found it on the back side. It's all the way at the top. You're just gonna have to fish around. It's behind these clips a little bit. You can kind of, in this shot, see the see my extension. It's kind of sh shiny where the bolt is. This was pretty tricky to catch on camera. So let's go back to that diagram from earlier. Here's where the rod makes the connection with the switch. Now it could look a little confusing, but I believe parts number 82 and 83, when they're attached to the steering column, they look like the same part because you can see where part 84 attaches right to the column. That's what we're adjusting right now. We have to loosen it and move it forward ever so slightly so that the metal rod can make a better connection. All right guys, pro tip. Remove the four bolts that keep the steering wheel column afloat because it'll drop the column down and that's gonna make this so much easier because you could just see, that's the bolt right there and I can reach it from here. And I think the extra space will help me with the back bolt as well. All right, I got it. Check it out. It works again. If you're doing this at home and need any advice, feel free to leave a comment. There's really not a ton of stuff on YouTube about this, but I'll help out if I can. Anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.